sorry about that. My phone was dying and I had some technical difficulties, which is common with me if you know me. So thankfully my daughter rescued me and plugged my phone in. So I was going to paint the center of this little flower and I have some nice yellow here and a nice tiny brush and I'm just gonna come in and give it a little, little yellow. And like I said before, I'm just doing the first wash. So I'm just doing a flat color all over. Um, if I feel like it, I'm gonna come in and do some darker tones, give it a little dimension. But for now, I'm just doing a solid color wash on everything. Great. All right, so I'm going to switch back to my little lily pads now that they're dry and I have this peacock blue green here and I'm just gonna mix a little bit of that into my green that I already made for the lily pads just so I can have color kind of similar to what I was using but a little darker so I'm just gonna do this little edge right here slightly darker and I'm just using this tiny little brush and I know you guys will do a much neater job than I am because your eyes are better your hands aren't as shaky. That's right. You're not you're not as old like your teacher. And I'm just gonna come in and paint this edge kind of a dark green tealy color. And that's the one thing you have to remember when you're watercoloring. You want to paint a section and then leave it, let it dry move on to something else, and then come back and paint next to it after it's dry. Unless you're looking for that effect where it's bleeding into itself, which I know sometimes we like. expect you guys to finish this in one day either. Um, I'm kind of rushing through this since I don't really have a ton of other things going on today. But I know you have to get all of your work in for all of your classes so don't don't sweat it if you can't finish. We have the whole week so just plan on spending the amount of time on this that we would have spent in class. So if you have 50 minutes today to work on your art that would be great. If you don't get it finished today, that's okay. Just work on it tomorrow. And from what I understand, we might be home for a long time. So I'll have to think of what else we can do. If you have an idea and you want to see something, just text me. And then the next project, I'll try and do what you need. So. But it was such a pretty day today, so I figured I would do some painting. Since all the stores are closed and all the restaurants are closed and I can't go to the movies and <laughs> I'm pretty tired of Netflix. I don't know about you guys. You guys been binge watching? So I, uh, I got all the episodes of everything I've ever wanted to watch in and now I'm done. I don't think I need any more TV in my life. So now is a good time to get caught up on some art and um, I might start working on that book that I was going to illustrate again. I was trying to think if I should film that or not. I don't know. If you guys have comments just let me know what you think. And you know let me know what you want to see. If there's anything specific I 
know my uh, fifth graders have been asking me for Baby Yoda tutorials. <laughs> I'm trying to think of how we would do that without being in a copyright infringement kind of thing. But um, I do like Baby Yoda. So yeah, if you're watching me on YouTube, make sure you subscribe to my page, you know, because I'm definitely going to be a big famous artist now, right? <laughs> Since I'm officially posting videos. <laughs> which I think is funny, and Emily's having so much fun. She's like, oh, you have four subscribers. I'm like, yay, what does that mean? I have no idea. So I have more than four students, so I'm not really sure why. But you know what? Just subscribe. Make, make your teacher happy. So let's see. What else do I want to do? So my little koi fish in nature, they're usually black, white, orange, yellow, and somewhat reddish. So... I think I'll do mine orange and black. So to start here, I'm going to put my orange, and it's a fancy color. It's called orange. I don't know. It's very exciting. I'm going to put a little orange in there and mix this up. And now is kind of the fun part because I've left all this pattern, and I have to decide what parts am I going to make orange. So, maybe I'll make his fins orange. I come in, and now my blue is very, very dry, which I planned on so that this would not bleed. And again, remember, if I'm going to paint this orange, but I want black right next to it, I have to wait. If I start painting black right here, it's going to go into that area, and it's going to look bad. And there's no, there's no erasing. I made these little orange slice looking things, so I figure they should be orange. So I'm just going to paint those in. Oh, I see I missed a part of the leaf there. Wow, look at that. I messed up. We'll have to see if we can fix it. Maybe I'll just make that part of his fin. How come nobody texted me and said, hey, why aren't you fixing that? All right. And I think that this little part is just going to be part of his fin. Like a little tail. Now I'm going to do this little edge work here. And what else? Maybe his middle fin here. And it just goes up here to this little area right here. There. That's cute. And I'll give him a little orange nose. So I have this pond at my house, and I used to have a lot of koi fish. But the bears have been coming around and eating them over the years, so now I only have like six. And they're so scared they never come out. So well, it just looks like an empty pond. So last summer I went down to the pet store, and I got um, like a hundred baby goldfish. 
we put them in the pond and in a week they were all gone. And I was trying to figure out what happened to all those little baby goldfish. Well, apparently we have this great blue heron who was coming by and eating them all. So that was the end of the goldfish. Very sad. So I'm just mixing up some yellow and some orange to kind of tone down that orange a little bit so I can make kind of a yellowy orange color. So I'm just going to do that right here next to the fin. So there's a few areas I'll probably do black. I think most of it I'm going to leave um, white. And anywhere you want white, you just leave the paper that color. We typically don't use the white in our uh, watercolor palette unless we're trying to put in uh, a little highlight that we forgot. But I find that using white gel pens is much better for that than the white paint. If you ever add white paint to any of the other colors, it always just makes it kind of chalky. I don't really like the look of it. So if you want a lighter color, just add more water. Don't add white. So I'm just going to finish this up. I'm thinking I'll do some black on his little scales here. But I'm gonna let this really dry before I go in with the black. So I don't want the black going into any of this. And then I'm gonna paint this little eye area. Be careful not to paint in the little reflection in the eye. We want that to stay white. here on the side of him. And I might bring some red in. Just a few touches. Oops, let me rinse that out. Maybe I'll use one of my metallics. I have this really bright red right here. Let's see what that looks like. Maybe I'll use that one. I'm just going to put a little water in it to kind of get it going here. And let's see. Did these weird little leaf things. I'll do those in pink. And you can make your fish any color you want. This is entirely up to you. This is just to give you an idea of something to do. I think sometimes the hardest part of being home is having an idea. So here's an idea if you so desire. You know, if there's something else you would rather work on, I'm okay with that. Just keep in contact with me during these times, the weeks that we're off. Can absolutely do an independent study. That's fine. 
there's something that you are missing in your portfolio that you need. Um, there's a lot of videos on YouTube. Just make sure you're picking something that is not too difficult. That's not going to frustrate you. And I kind of like these shiny paints. Maybe I'll give him these things. Okay, what else does he need? Maybe his little forehead right here. Give him some more red. All right, so I'm gonna let that dry. And while I'm letting that dry, I'm gonna use some black. And there's a black right here. I'll use this black. this is going to look like. I've never seen a metallic black before. So this is exciting. I imagine it'll just be black. So I want to make sure when I'm doing black that I really have let my areas dry. I'm not going to paint next to anything that's super wet. Right? I can still see it shiny. If I paint next to it, it's going to bleed in there. And there's no do-overs in watercolor. That's nice. Come in and make our little spots black now. Just like that. And then I wanted to make these little scales black. So I'm going to go around them here. I don't usually use black when I watercolor. It makes things really dark. Um, if you're doing a more natural looking painting, you can always mix in complementary colors to make things darker. It gives you a more natural look. But for this little painting, I'm just gonna use this black. Since you probably have a black and learning how to mix colors is for another day. All right. This will be my longest video. I would have done this all in one video or at least a couple, but I like to take a lot of, a lot of breaks. I find that if I paint too long, my, my hand starts hurting. So, take little, little steps. So that's what I'm saying, you know, don't get overwhelmed with your art. Take your time. If you're finding that you're not enjoying it, then you need to stop do something else, you know. You really want the art to be something that's fun for you, relaxing. Okay. And I think I'll do these little stripes right here. And this 
little area around his little eye here. They really give him a kind of sinister look. You gotta be careful not to put your hand in the wet paint. That is one of the things that will mess up your painting. Just like when we're drawing in class and I say, don't run your hand through your paper. It's the same thing with watercolor. All right, so I'm gonna let that dry. Oh, my cat's yelling at me. He wants to get out. Hi, Frankie. Say hi. That's Frankie. I'm gonna let him out. Look at my picture for a second while I let him out. thought he wanted to be with me, but he decided I was taking too long in here. All right, one more little section of black, and then I'm going to let it dry. I just want to do his little nose right here. Just like that. There. Okay, so... That's it for now. I might come back in and do some layering, but I like the way that's looking. So I'm going to go back to my, my lily pads now that they're really dry. And I'm going back to my green. And I have this kind of swampy green color mixed up. I'm going to add a little bit more of the turquoisey color to it. Just gonna paint in these little lines just like that. Give it some dimension. could have left it the other way, but I figure I'll just do a little glazing. Like that. And then the last thing I want to do is on my flower, I'm going to put a little bright pink highlight here. So I'm going to use my metallics. And let's see, maybe that pretty pinky color. it and then I'm just gonna go underneath each petal just like that give them a little shadow like that just pull it into the petal a little bit So I'm just going in where the underneath of the petal is, where it has a little depth. And you can do this with any pink or even a light toned red. It depends on what color you painted your uh, flower to begin with. a little bright so I'll put a little more water just like that And then I'll just give my flower a little bit of dimension here. Right around the center.
There we go. That's kind of pretty. And now we're going to try the gold. Let's try the gold. Some water in there, get it going here. Ooh, that's pretty. I'm just gonna put a little gold sparkles. Now, if you like the look of these metallics. Um, I'm happy to let you use them when we get back to class. If we ever get back to the art room. I like the gold. I feel like the fish needs a little sparkle here and there. I'm just going to put a little sparkle on him. do gold down this area where I messed up. Happy accident, right? There we go. Oh, the gold is pretty. And it looks like my black is still pretty wet up there, but I might just come in and put just the touch of gold here and there. Trying to stay away from the areas that are still wet. There we go. All right. I kind of like them. Maybe I'll leave it like that. Alright, so there is my koi fish. And I will take the tape off so you can see how neat it looks without this bright green. Now, if you don't have tape, that's fine. You just won't get this beautiful crisp edge. You see how nice and neat that looks? It gives your artwork a very professional look. So. I do like to use tape. There we go. The last step, as we always do, is to go ahead and sign it. I'm going to grab my little fine liner and There we are. So, hope you enjoyed that. And let me know if you have any questions or you need any help with the projects. All right, thanks, bye.